I'm the director of Open Drama. I just want to thank you for coming. This is a really nice turnout for a showcase. So what you're going to see tonight are 55 of our drama students that are competing tomorrow at West Boca High School in the District Thespian Festival. And they're competing for um, scores and then they get judging feedback and some of them may have the opportunity to perform in a showcase tomorrow at West Boca High School, but as we don't know who gets to do that, we do the showcase here so you can see your kids and have, you know, see what they've been working on for a couple months. And they've worked very hard. What you're really going to see tonight is mostly a student-led program. So all the choreography has been done by the individual students in the program. We've had students rehearsing, music directing, pounding notes on the piano. I mean, it's very cool to watch them work and take ownership of something like this because mostly it's, it's me and other adults kind of telling them what to do and directing them. This is a great opportunity for some of them to do something in a leadership capacity. There's going to be about a 10 minute intermission after the first act and please feel free to uh, patronize our concessions bar. All of the money goes back into our program. And I will just tell you that in January, we'll be doing our first of two musicals in the spring. Two full musicals. It's called The Theory of Relativity, and that show will be going up the week of January 10th through the 12th. And in April, we'll be doing Hello, Dolly, which will be our big spring musical. In between those two shows, most of these kids that you'll see tonight are going to be performing and competing and participating in the State Thespian Festival in Tampa. So we have a very busy few months ahead of us. Um, if you want to stay in touch with everything that we're doing, go to our website. It's just Boca Drama. At the bottom of the first page, you add your email to a list, and any time we're doing a performance, I will send a flyer, information, and a link for where you can get tickets. So just to make things a little more streamlined, we'd love to see a bunch of you join our website after tonight's performance. That's all I have to say. Thank you again for coming out and supporting the Polka Drama, and I hope you enjoy the show.
we really need to get started. <laughs> and yes, we're running behind. <laughs> we're running behind. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm not doing a minor exercise with you. I'm not doing a minor exercise with you. I'm serious. I'm serious. Stop this at once. Stop this. Uh,
for its I'm tough to 
a romantic tough guy. Yeah, sort of like Rock Hudson, but straight. <laughs> this one time, I wrote a poem for my ex-girlfriend. She said, that's the best thing I've ever read. And she reads poets, yeah, Yeats, Cummings, <laughs> you name it. She's got all these guys bouncing around her head. She sounds great. She has an insight that I swear can win a Pulitzer Prize. There's a genius in her mind that truly sparkles through her eyes. She's so smart to be near her, makes her intelligence rise. But I don't want to talk about her. So, uh, what do you do? I'm a photographer. Wow, okay. What kind of stuff do you do? I'm trying to capture the beauty of the human spirit. Speaking of beauty, that reminds me of my ex-girlfriend. Oh, she was gorgeous, but she never really she had a smile, I swear to God, you were blessed if you had one chance to view it. She had a look that could inspire symphonies, or cause the most stubborn men to have epiphanies. She's as enchanting as that in breakfast at Symphonies. But I don't want to talk about her. So you have an ex-girlfriend? Uh, I don't want to talk about her. Right. was 
don't forget to eat. Please write. And take care of yourself. And just as they were leaving, my father turned to the producer and he said, take care of my son. Son. That, that's the first time you ever called me that. I, I, sorry. You understand me not that tell me so. I do not speak of flights, of fear, of death. But dare all eminence that gods and men address their dangers in. Hector is gone. Who shall tell Priam so? Or, or Hecuba? Let him that is screech out, will I be called? March into Troy and say, Hector is dead. Now, there is a word that will turn Priam into stone and make, and make wells and nigos of the young wives and maids, cold statues of the youth. And in a word, turn Troy out of itself. But march away. Hector is dead. There is nothing more to say. Stay yet, you vile, abominable tents, thus proudly high our Phrygian plains. Let him rise as early as he did, all through and through, and thou, great sized coward. No space of, of heaven or of earth shall sever our two hates. All haunt thee like a wicked conscience still, like, like mold of goblins, swift as frenzy's thoughts. Shrek the march to Troy. With comfort, go. Hope will hide our inward woe. Thank you. Hi, I am Antonio Saladino. I will be performing a solo musical called All I Need Is a Girl from the musical Gypsy. And I proudly represent through 2564. Once my clothes were shabby, tailors called me cabby. So I took a vow, set this bubble, be bubble. And snappy, now my sailor's happy. I go, cats me out. My wardrobe is a wow. Hair is silk, hair is tweed. There's only one thing I need. Got my tweed dress, got my best.
author from the show, Jealousy Day, written by Lindsay Price. And this piece has no asterisk, so please sit back and enjoy. And we proudly represent the two by six four. It's not about being be jealous. It's just a feeling, just an emotion. Jealous people don't kill or anything. Oh wait, they do. But that doesn't lie to me. Because I, because I've never felt, never, I, it's just ridiculous. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just telling the truth. And you, I'm getting tired of, you, you talk. What happened? You don't even look like a monster you talked in sentences. I did, didn't I? What a glorious thing. Why did I try this sooner? This truly is glorious. And you're clean and you're wearing nice clothes and you're talking in. Complete sentences. Yes, we established that. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I don't like this plot twist at all. I think I'm here to stay, Jay, and I like this place and you're a very gracious host, if I may say so. The more you deny me, the stronger I get. I am not in denial. That's the spirit. You can't get stronger. I don't want to have a conversation with the monster. You can't stay. Yet, here I am. So what are we doing today? School? Walking the halls? The slaying of locker doors? The substandard cafeteria foods? Hearing the taunts and jeers aimed at the less fortunate? I do adore the classics. No? What about the mall? You don't like the mall, do you, Jay? All those girls with their better looks and better bodies? Stop it. They've all got money to run, too. They never have to look at price tags like you have to. Stop it. They've all got their own cars, and you don't. They wear clothes you could never fit into. They buy CDs by the dozen. Haven't you always wanted to be a musician? You know that will never happen to someone like you. My god, it feels so good to hate them so much. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm hungry, Jay. Let's get something to eat. I don't want to. I'm not hungry. You're not in charge anymore, sister. And I'm just getting started. The play is mine. You can't do that. Change the set, please. You got to leave this whole play? How did that happen? I got more talent my baby than your baby with your whole body. You want the writing contest? I should want You're not half as good as me. You made this cool basketball team? Of all the luck, how on earth did that happen? You get everything you ask for, don't you? You never have to look the finger. Well, where do we go? You sure know how to clear a room. Why are you being so mean? I'm just acting on your instincts, Jane. No, these are my instincts. I would never say those things. Yeah, you say those things all the time, and you do say them behind people's backs. Do you think that just because you don't say something to a person's face that makes it all right? No, you've got it all wrong. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. As you can see, I'm in a bit of a bind here. I didn't expect this turn of events. Who are you talking to? The audience. Let's see. Are you jealous of any of them? Only that they're out there and I'm up here. Then I guess I should continue what I'm doing. The monster crossed in front of the previous main character, Jane, upstaging her pantingly. The monster smiles, turns its head, and speaks in lovely voice and tone. Monster Colin, come on, Jane, we're going to a party. What kind of party is this? It's the Jealousy Monster's Ball. We've been dying to attend one, but I've never been fully developed. Great. I owe it all to you, Jane. Thanks a bunch, kid. All these people have monsters inside of them? This is just the tip of the iceberg, Jane. Monsters are everywhere. Hiding your ears, sitting on your shoulders, sucking up your every thought, and once you let your monster out, it's practically impossible to get rid of it. Impossible? That's right. Impossible. I have no time for small talk, Jane. Mingle, mingle. I don't want to mingle with monsters. They look awful. Who said you have a choice? Thank you. Good morning. 
We're practicing loving kindness meditation now. Mm. See, it's my sister's wedding tomorrow, and I really want to be in a happy, loving place for her. Mm. I'm just kind of struggling with the fact that she's like, well, you know, a massive slut. <laughs> See, she slept with my boyfriend after her bachelorette party last night. Um. Now, Peter isn't the brightest person, so I made sure to give him clear instructions. Um. Give her a ride home, right? Not <laughs> take her home and give her a ride up. Um. <laughs>
Battle Party, and I proudly represent Troop 2564.
Hello, my name is Austin Tindell, and today I will be performing a solo musical entitled You Gotta Die Sometime from the musical Falsettos. This song is asterisk for a frank talk of death, so if, if you feel as though that may offend you, please leave the room now. Thank you. And I proudly represent Troop 25. Six four. I said, Doctor, in plain English, tell me why was I chosen? Why me, oh man? Doctor, here's the good part. At least death means I'll never be scared about dying again. Let's get on with living while we can and not play dumb. Death's gonna come when it does. Screw the nurse, I'll be eating more dirt. It's the
Hello, my name is Lisa Cubella, Sarah Lash, my Martinez, and we have Martinez and Co. Today, we'll be performing a small group musical entitled That's Why I Love My Man from the Great American Trailer Park the Musical. This piece is asked for everything except for sexual assault, so if you feel you may be uncomfortable, please leave the room now. Thank you. And we proudly represent Troop 2564. Since the pumpkin became the husband's home, I always knew this day would come. When a trailer park's will lose my young gets fried. It's hard to let go of your only one. Only one? He was a beer cousin, part of the watch, an ass cracker, stripper, screw, and anything that's no good to do. Hi, my name is Grayson. And I'm Cody Seidel. And we will be performing a duet acting scene for Reasons to be Pretty. This scene has no asterisk, so please sit back and enjoy. And we proudly represent Troop 2564. No, 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 uh uh. No. Yes! No, that's not it. Don't lie! I didn't say that. Yes, you did. I didn't. Please, I mean, I swear, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. So do not try and land on on your way out of this one. Oh, I'm not. Oh, screw you. Oh, God, look, I just want no, to go. No, no, I don't care what you want to do, okay? Okay, would you stop, please? No, no I'm not going to stop. No, for what? Because I, I, so, so I can explain okay, that. No, I've already heard all of the explanations I need, so, and I don't believe them. Get that? This is just stupid, so I'm uh, not going to. Do not walk out of your line when we're fighting, I swear to God. I'll murder your fish when you're gone. Yeah, I'll bless them. I'll do whatever it takes, but I will hurt you. And you won't like it, so you better just stay right there. Man, this is... You're talking no, about... Don't say that either. Seriously. I mean, boy, if you're looking for things to get messy, then okay. But otherwise, I wouldn't say anything like that. Nothing about being a psycho or any of that stuff. Stephanie, listen. Uh-uh, no. Please. Please. Please, it's like something you crap out of your pants and you're too embarrassed to clean up. Okay. I'm not even going to listen to it. I don't even know what to say to you about this. 
is that the truth. I'm telling you the No, whole... don't say it if it's not, because I will know it. You'll know that I'll know it. You'll know it, I'll pounce on you like I was death itself if you're lying to me. Seriously, like death. So, what did you say that she called me about? Steph! Right. I didn't say anything. I mean, did, did, did she... What? You don't remember? Hmm? No. I mean, I, I was talking to Ken, and we were laughing about stuff, about, I, I don't know, work, and how this new guy who's a real goof has been begging us to join our softball team. So, we're joking about whatever, and that's all. Yep. Come on, Steph. You know how we are. We're just... What? Just talking, Jesus, going on about our lives and situations. It's no big deal. Anything we said. And if she's going to call you every time I go over there, then I'm never going to go over there again. All right? I'm not. Fine, then. And so you're talking. Jesus. How about we do it this way? I'll say it, and you tell me if it's true or not. No, no, that, that's stupid, so no. Really? Because I think that would make it easier. Treat you like a little preschooler. I don't need anything to be easier, all right? Look, I'm not afraid of you or about anything I said because it wasn't a big deal. We had a few beers, and maybe we were a bit loud out in the garage where we were talking, but I didn't say anything. She was in the kitchen, Greg. Door to the kitchen was open. Voices traveled. They're made up of sound in case you didn't know. Yeah, I'm down with the basic scientific principles. And so that she's cooking up some meat for tacos, and she hears you plain as day, going on about me, and there's no doubt in her mind, that's none whatsoever, that you said exactly what she repeated. I see. So over the sound of hot meat cooking, she can hear you me. Are so can we not make the entire building aware of your psychotic break with reality? My psychotic break with reality? Okay, okay. you know what? I don't need to stand here and take this. I don't. Throw the fish in the toilet again. It's not like I'm going to be surprised. I don't need to hang out around here and get abused like this. You've got a real issue with your temper there, Steph. Just tell me what you said. Just tell me and I'll stop. Fine. Fine. I will. Then do it. Stop, okay? Just stop. Ken said something about some new girl from work. Some younger gal who just got hired. Worked swing. And he said she was hot. Said she was pretty, and I agreed, and that was all. Really. That's it? Yeah. I see. And nothing about me? Uh, nothing I, about me being character? I, I, I don't think I said. No? No, no, not in comparison or even. Or anything like that at all. Nope. You got this far. Don't screw it up now. I. What, what I said was um, something like. Yeah, well, maybe Steph hasn't got a face like that, girls. Maybe her face is just regular. But I wouldn't trade it for a million bucks. Yeah, something like that. Oh. Yeah. You know, just, I was just... Regular. Yes, that was all. Regular. Okay. See, I never said ugly. I, I was just... Yeah. That's what Carly said to me. You said those exact words. All right, then. Which was not meant as any sort of comparison no. at, at all. No. No, it was, it was more a point of contrast. With you is the good thing. Okay. Even though she's beautiful? Pretty. Yeah, I, I meant it as a compliment. Well, guess what? It's not. Thank you.
and tonight I'll be performing two contrasted monologues. The first is Attention by Joseph Arnon, and the second is Goodbye Charles by Gabriel Davis. There are no asterisks, so please sit back, relax, and enjoy. And I proudly represent Troop 2564. That's all you want, isn't it? That's what you do. It's why you always create drama in this family for the attention of it all. You're just never happy, are you? Unless the world is talking about you. You can't live without creating some kind of drama so the world can be thinking about you. And that makes you happy. And I'm getting sick of this because you're doing a number on us all. I don't know what you're going through, but it's got to come to an end. Why are you so sick in the head? Why can't you just be normal and not be so crazy? There are better things you could do to get people to think of you. Do some good stuff once in a while. And I bet you'll not only get thinking, everyone thinking about your positive way, but you feel good about yourself. Don't you want that? Don't you want to feel good about yourself? I ate them! That's right! I ate the divorce papers, Charles! I ate them with ketchup! And they were good! Good. You probably won't get it serious about it, of course. The thing is, you always called our marriage a joke! So let's use logic here. If A, we never had a serious marriage, then B, we can't have a serious divorce. No, we can't. The whole thing is a farce, Charles. A farce that tastes good with ketchup. Thank you.
Lacey Whitten, and today I am presenting two contrasting monologues. The first is from Winter Time by Charles Mee, and the second is from Vital Signs by Jane Martin. The second monologue has an asterisk for adult language, so if you feel that that might offend you, please take the time to leave now. And with that, I proudly represent, for the last time, True two five. Six four. You don't think I notice? I hear you talking on the phone to her. What do you want? You giggle? Do you ever giggle when I call her? No. <laughs> what do I do? that pleases you. What is that? You don't think that my jokes are funny? You don't think that what I have to say is worth thinking about? Your first instinct to everything I say is to disagree, not to think the way, the way you do with Ursula. Oh, wow, that's such an interesting insight. I never thought about it like that before. Don't you think that's just amazing? Hell, no, no, I do not. No one else would even give her the time of day. Jeez. This is kind of embarrassing, but no, 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 straight out. I, uh, I miss the Cold War. Oh, oh, no, 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 I do. I mean, I liked being afraid of the Russians. I mean, oh, without the Russians, who am I supposed to hate now? <laughs> Myself, probably. Uh, I, you know what I used to say to myself? I used to say to myself, wow, Kathy, you're really being a dick right now. <laughs> no, 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 you're screwed up, Kathy. Oh, and Kathy, are you leading an unexamined life? <laughs> but it didn't matter, right? Because boom! Pew, pew, pew. Adios. Nuke, earlier <laughs> winter. <Ugh>. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. You and I, you and I. 
Hi, I'm Antonio Sabia. Sarah.
Thank you. 